Just that ring. Ah, oh, it carries it so beautifully. I love it. So this is all the loose bronze. It's basically from these rods to the right is everything that we got from a 28 foot Pearson that we scrapped a while back. Um, so that boat was fiberglass and it was at the end of its life and it had a lead keel and a bunch of bronze hardware. So we went and bought the boat for $500. The guy got a dumpster with the $500 and we cut it up, put it in the dumpster in a day and we came back and this was the bronze that was on that boat. So there's a bunch of winch winches and a ton of cleats, some other hardware. Um, these lights are really cool, the old bronze lights. We'll have to see if we can get a couple more of those. Yeah, we had like a pretty good haul off that little Pearson. And then this is everything that is loose from Victoria. So we got a bunch of really cool old bronze blocks. Bronze belaying pins, some turnbuckles, the screens for the port lights, the bell, of course. And then just a bunch of stuff for rigging and some interior hardware. This old door handle is pretty cool. So this is all bronze. It's even got the lock. So, be cool to fix some of this stuff up and put it in Arabella. So this thing's kind of cool. Put a couple screws in it, attach it to the wall, and then we needed to hang some stuff up. A little hook comes down and you even have little notches. It's where you can hang your wardrobe. And then you just loosen the hook and put it down out of the way when it's not needed. One of a million beautiful little details that came from Victoria. And then we have the melt buckets. So this is all bronze that we're probably not going to use as it is, and uh, we'll end up putting it into the smelting pot, melting down, and casting new things out of it for the boat. But it's great, we probably already have 60 or 70 pounds of bronze to melt, which is going to go a long way towards fittings that we're going to need to cast. So we've had a couple folks uh, get a hold of us already and ask if we'll be willing to sell some of the bronze that we acquired. And right now, that's a hard no. We're going to hang on to everything we got. Um, we're going to outfit Arabella as best we can, and then whatever we have left over at the end, we'll find homes for. The exception to that right now is anything in our melt buckets. So we've got a bucket here that's all screws and bolts, nuts, washers. There might be some brass stuff in there. I think most of it's bronze. Um, all of this is just gonna end up getting sorted through and melted down, we're not gonna reuse it. Same thing goes, we have some rudder hardware from a 40 foot boat that we had gotten the keel from. So, you know, this would be the bottom for the rudder. We don't need that, that'll end up in the melt pot. And then inside the bucket, you can see there's some old propeller shaft, some bronze plate, just a ton of different length bolts and pipe and all sorts of stuff. It's all different layers of corrosion. Um, but if you're in the area, if you're passing through the area, if you've got a project going on and you need like six patinaed bronze screws, we can probably help you out. Um, but we're not going to dig through the bucket and try to like figure it all out. If you want anything from here, you got to physically come here, dig it out and find it. Um, and if not, no worries, we're going to melt it all down. But maybe we do have that missing screw that somebody else needs and it's better than it going in the melting pot. So yeah, if you see anything, just give us a holler, but all the good stuff we're gonna hang on to for now. Yeah, so we got probably an old prop shaft, some pipe, some bolts, more bronze rod. I don't know, most of it's junk, I think, but maybe we got something someone needs. Uprights for the lifelines on Victoria. There's a bunch of them, and most of them are bent. And yeah. Anybody know what this weird plate is? So this originally, I mean, we thought we could reuse these somewhere else, but it had these handles on either end. And to us, it looks like a griddle, but would you use a bronze griddle? And then with the bolts going through it like that? We're at a loss. Yeah, all sorts of goodies. Some of this might even be, no, maybe that's bronze. It doesn't look like copper.
I don't know. Maybe it's useful to someone. Well, now that you've seen all the loose bronze, let's go take a look at what's still bolted down to Victoria and check out the good and the bad and the ugly that is Victoria. So this is the keel and this is the forefoot of Victoria and this is why we are not restoring her. That one's not too bad, but you see how punky that forefoot is? She's just absolutely falling apart. It's all rotten. Planking's decently solid, but I mean even here, it starts to get a little softer than we'd like. And then there's this, this hole with a bolt that seems to go through and you can push the bolt on either side and get it to move. And that doesn't seem good either. So underneath all of this paint is bronze hardware for the rudder and we can just unbolt and reuse the majority of that. We'll see what it looks like when we get the paint off it, but we should just be able to reuse them. And if for some reason we can't, we can use them as patterns to cast our own, which is awesome. And just that saves us a ton of time. And then here we have the stern post of the boat, and you can see how big of a gap there is here between the planking and the stern post, and that should not be that way. Uh, and it was also, we were told, leaking pretty severely from the stern posts. And when the former owner winterized the diesel, he took like a five gallon bucket of fresh water down into the bilge, and stuck the inlet for the diesel to it because it's water cooled, sucks up a couple gallons of that fresh water, and says, yeah, all right, diesel's warmed up enough, takes the rest of that water and just dumps it into the bilge, like three gallons of fresh water right into the bilge. And then he fills up the bucket with antifreeze, runs that through so that there's uh, antifreeze all through the diesel, through the cooling intake, so that in the winter, that water doesn't freeze and crack the motor apart. So then whatever was left of that, he just dumps or dumped into the bilge. And then I was on deck watching this, and by the time I hit the ground, it was seeping out of this seam, but it was also actually seeping out of like the paint on the side of the keel timber. Like the keel timber itself was weeping out this liquid. Uh, and it only took a matter of 35, 40 seconds for it to make it from the inside of the boat to the outside of the boat. So also really not a good sign. But the bronze hardware we can use. So this is, I'm told, is called a maxi prop. So it's kind of cool when the motor's, you know, spinning forward, the prop rotates, the blades, the rope's kind of in the way here, the blades rotate, and then they end up at a fixed point. So I'll push the boat forward. And then when we're sailing and we're not using the motor, these will just free spin and they'll find whatever is the path of least resistance and they'll kind of stay there. And then if you put the boat into reverse, I might be spinning these the wrong way, but you get the idea. They spin and they lock in the other way. So instead of trying to like have the blades angled the wrong way when you're going into reverse and they're not as efficient, uh, they'll put themselves into the proper orientation so that you have just as much basically suck going backwards as you do push going forward, uh, which is really cool. And then under sail, they'll just you know put themselves into the path the least resistance and they won't be dragging a ton. And we can put this right into Arabella. This back here is all chewed up and it looks like hell, but it's supposed to be. That's a zinc anoid, so we can replace that. Um, and that's to help with galvanic action, which we can explain another time. But this prop itself is like a huge savings. We're really psyched for that. So now we get to fun of the, kind of the fun little stuff on Victoria. So here we have an old bronze swim step. So this line here is the water line. So just above the water line, and you can use that to get aboard after you go swimming. Obviously when the prop isn't running, so I'll take your leg off. And then we got the bronze for the rudder hardware. And all the stuff that's lower, that's all painted. This is what it would look like if it wasn't covered in anti-fouling paint. So we're pretty psyched, and we should be able to just unbolt that and bolt it right into Arabella. So these are the gaff jaws, and they're made out of bronze and they're in phenomenal shape so we'll certainly reuse those um, and then same thing with a lot of the fittings on the mast they're all bronze and most of them are in good enough shape that we can just reuse and since victoria was a cutter and we're building a catch although our boat is bigger 
her mainsail will be similar size, maybe even smaller than what Victoria had because the sail plan's broken up between two masts instead of one. So most of this hardware, although Victoria's a little smaller boat, should fit our main really, really well. And if we have to change the dimensions of our mast just a little bit to, to match these, we can probably do it as long as it's, you know, not outrageous. Well, you wanna come aboard? Yeah, let's do it. Watch your step, they're huge. <laughs> so all the scuppers have bronze plates for them. I think there's 11 per side if I counted correctly. So we can reuse all of that. And then there's nine matching bronze port lights on the deck house. Uh, and they all open and we have screens for the vast majority of them. Then there's two smaller ones in the cockpit and there's two bronze deck lights, which is pretty cool. And they all match. So basically all the metal you see on Victoria is bronze with a few exceptions, the lifelines being one of them <clears throat> and this traveler. But all the hardware for like this four hatch, the bronze windlass, the bow rollers, everything is bronze. It's just unbelievable how much bronze is in this boat. You should come up here and check out the, uh, the windlass and some of these cool old cleats. So this is one of the things that when we initially went and looked at Victoria and took a lap around, for me, I was like, yep, bingo, we will buy her and we will buy her basically solely for this. Um, and this is a really old bronze anchor windlass. So you would use this to raise or lower both of your anchors. And it's like super cool, ingenious, very simple design. Uh, in the center is this kind of friction device so you can control it by turning this knob which right now is frozen and needs to be loosened up but that would tighten down and it would allow you to adjust how fast these rollers would spin so you could adjust how fast your anchor were to go out and this side has pawls for the chain and you lift the cap off and the chain runs right down into your chain locker and then this side is set up for a rope and this side also is set up for a rope. So your chain would go through here and out to the anchor on the bow roller. And when you wanted to lower your anchor, all you would do is make sure that these stops are out of the way. Loosen here, unhitch your anchor, and let it go. And you could unscrew this and let your anchor go faster, or you could tighten it and make your anchor go slower. And then when you want to bring the anchor in, Okay, same deal, loosen this up. You put a pull, a handle in here, and it would just crank your anchor back. When you have the stops, they keep it from going back. Then you can run both sides. So you can put a rope on here, put your anchor on there. And the great thing, cool thing about this is it's, it's slow, but it's super simple. There's nothing really to go wrong. Uh, and there's just two little grease fittings that you got to keep some grease into. So we're really, really, really psyched to give this a good go over, clean her up, and bolt her onto Arabella. As well as these cleats and the hatch hardware and the bronze mooring bit and the bow rollers and everything else. It's just staggering. Absolutely staggering. So here we are in the cockpit of Victoria. And... In the way back, we have the bronze rudder head, which we will not use because it's a fixed rudder head. And having the rudder be able to go up and down a little bit would be really, really nice. So that'll probably end up getting thrown in the melting pot and becoming something else. But the Traveler, the mooring bit, the bronze cowl, absolutely these boom gallows that are all bronze. We will reuse all of that as well as all the other stuff that's in the cockpit here, which is really cool. So in the cockpit here, we've got bronze forward and reverse and throttle controls, which are super cool. Uh, we got bronze scuppers so that the cockpit drains. And then forward, we have these awesome little port lights that go down by the engine companionway. And they even have little bronze latches so you can latch them open. And this boat is just full of incredible little details like that, like very specific tiny bronze latches for things. And then the crowning jewel of the cockpit is the binnacle here. 
and they just they don't make them like this anymore they really really don't so this is all bronze beautiful patina we'll probably leave it that way so if we open up the binnacle find our compass how cool is that and it's in great shape it's even got a light <clears throat> which doesn't currently work but that light switch controls a little red right little red light up here and i'm sure that that's a pretty easy fix to get that up and running and uh yeah we will certainly put this binnacle in arabella super psyched for that now we can go down the companionway and see below so here we have the companionway doors and even these i mean we can you reuse these bronze hinges which are awesome and these really cool old bronze latches and these are really neat so when you want to have the companionway open just slide the latch over and drop into these notches and if you want to tighten them up you snug them up and the doors are solid and can't go anywhere and if for some reason they get a little jammed all you got to do is put a little something in one of those holes and it'll give you enough leverage to open them up the details like that are they're just incredible So down below we also have just a ton of treasures. So this interior, as far as we can tell, is completely mahogany. And a lot of it we can just unbolt and reuse. And a lot of the things that we maybe can't reuse, we can reuse the materials of. So for instance, these bunks are all made out of mahogany boards. And we can, you know, use this mahogany to make other things inside Arabella. And there are just a ton more bronze treasures. Uh, like all these matching lights. The barometer, the clock, all of our port lights, matching lights in the ceiling, this beautiful, beautiful swing table, it's all bronze hardware. It's just incredible. I mean, even the, the little latches for the locker doors, a lot of it's in really, really great shape. Um, and even the doors. So we can just unbolt these doors give them a sand, fresh coat of varnish, and when we build our frames for our lockers, we'll just make it so that the V-source fit. And we'll do the same thing with all of the, uh, the storage areas, you know, behind the seats and stuff. It's just really unreal, absolutely unreal, the amount of bronze that we have and the amount of stuff that we can literally just unbolt out of Victoria and bolt into Arabella and there's so much in Arabella that we are now going to do in the interior and otherwise to fit Victoria that uh, we don't even really know who's the donor boat anymore. Like, is the boat going to be more Victoria? Is the boat going to be more Arabella? Timber-wise, it's going to be more Arabella. But interior work, bronze fittings, the lights, that whole feel of it, I mean, that's going to be completely Victoria. So it's... Uh, I don't know, it's kind of cool. Really, really psyched to be able to be fortunate enough to have all this amazing hardware to use and all these amazing fittings and fixtures. And most of them are, you know, they were probably original from 1927, 1926. So they're almost 100 years old. And then we get to take them and put them into a new boat and take them on new adventures, which, yeah, it's a really good feeling to be able to do that. And there's even a lot of treasures that need some serious love, like the sextant over here. This is the box that holds the sextant, and we've been told that this is a decently, decent quality sextant, and that we should be able to get it restored. Get it out of here. And if we can, we'll probably put a new piece of glass on here, but we can reuse the box that someone made for it. And here's their sextant. So it's a uh, Tamaya, Tamaya, made in Tokyo, and it's obviously seen some very hard use, but we're told that it's completely restorable, and we've got a couple folks who predate GPS and have told us they would love to teach us. So when we get some time down the road, we really, really love to do a little research and get this cleaned up and really learn how to use it. Until then, it can stay where it's been safe for quite some time. And then we also have the 
chart dividers that came with her. So those are pretty cool. It'd be nice to put those to use. So all this looks well and amazing, but should we take a look at some of the problem spots? I think so. So we're looking in the very forward part of the boat here, up in the forepeak, and we're looking down into the bilge. And this part here would be the floor timber that we were looking at, or the, the forefoot that we were looking outside that is rotten. And down there more we have the keel timber. And you can see it looks like a bunch of that's been pulled and rotted away. And we have one bolt there that's sticking up, oh a good inch and a half, maybe two inches, where there used to be a timber. Same thing with this bull up forward, and it almost looks like somebody took a hatchet down there at some point and hacked away some of the rotten wood. So if you were to rebuild Victoria, you would have to replace all of that. And that's a lot of work, and it goes, it's this bad from stem all the way to stern. And that means that all of the bottom of the frames are rotten as well. So you'd have to do a complete reframing and new backbone. Most of the planking would have to be replaced, as a lot of the decking would as well. So, she would be a ton, a ton of work to fully restore. And you'd basically end up building a new boat. Okay. And this is a little bit farther forward. Um, so we'd be looking at part of the bow assembly here. And it's not quite as rotten as it is a little lower in the bilge, but it's still in really, really rough shape. And this is where they had the chain locker, and there was nothing underneath there except a board. So all of that dirt and mud and water that came up with the chain, most of that just ended up sitting down here. Didn't do her too many favors. I mean, even all of this is all rotten. See the mold? So these are the deck beams, the ends are split and rotten. Same thing, all under this is all moldy and rotten. I don't think there's going to be a ton, a ton of lumber from Victoria that's going to be salvageable. So looking aft in the forepeak and got a pair of matching lights and a couple bookshelves. Slightly tight spot, huh? It's pretty cozy, though. It's pretty cozy. I like this. Yeah. <laughs> I think there will, there will be more room in Arabella. She's yeah. a little bit beamier, a little bit longer. There's definitely some more room in the forepeak. But, yeah, it'll be similar feel. I like it that just short enough I can sit up. Yeah. If I was, like, two inches taller, even an inch taller, I don't think I'd be able to. But yeah, we can reuse those lights. We can reuse those bronze coat hooks that are hanging above the locker doors. We can reuse the bookshelves, a lot of the mahogany paneling. And when it comes time to take Victoria completely apart, we're going to do it slowly and we're going to do it carefully. And we're going to salvage as much lumber from her as we possibly can. And like a lot of these deck beams, you know, the ends are rotten, but maybe the middle's solid. So our goal is to build the dinghy completely out of salvaged lumber from Victoria, uh, and then take the little bronze nameplate off Victoria and put it on the transom of the dinghy, and name our dinghy Victoria. Um, that's the hope, and I think between all the mahogany framing and the cedar planking, we probably can get that done. Uh, which is, a, I don't know, kind of a fun little challenge we set up for ourselves at the very end, as if we don't have enough challenges. Well, I guess all that's left is the head, the motor, and the galley. Shall we go see? Let's do it. So, we haven't looked at the port lights yet, and they're pretty awesome. Just one screw. Open them up, and then we've got a bunch of different screens for them. Now we can get new rubber gaskets for them, and we can replace the glass in them. Only one of them is cracked. The rest seem to be in pretty good shape. I'm pretty psyched about those. And then everything else here in the galley is also bronze. You got your little soap holder and cup holder. I assume these are for your toothbrushes. 
And then you come a bit lower, we've got the bronze water pump and more bronze latches and hinges. It's pretty incredible. We even have a little handheld bronze horn. It doesn't seem to work, but at the same time, maybe we just don't know how to blow it properly. And then the bronze corkscrew bottle opener, which, come on, I've never seen one of those. I don't think anyone ever has. Oh, it has a little hook. You can hang something on it. Then you can put your beer in there and pop the top. And then you can pop out your little hook here and take your cork out. And then when the hook's not being used, it's actually set up just a little bit, so it actually pops right in there. It doesn't want to come out unless you actually take it out. Unbelievable. Who thought of that? Genius. So there's our uh, Perkins diesel. It should be 53 horsepower. And the former owner said it hadn't run in almost a year and it fired right up first try. So that's a really good sign. We're not 100% sure if we're going to use this motor in Arabella, but once we start taking Victoria apart, we'll definitely take this motor out and kind of go through it with a fine tooth comb. And if the major parts seem good, and it seems to be something that we can get parts for down the road and can turn into a reliable diesel for us, we wouldn't mind doing a full restoration on it and putting it in Arabella. But if anything at all seems hinky about it, we'll, we'll explore some other options. So this is one of the most amazing details on Victoria. And that is this bronze fish towel holder. And... I mean, even they even have the scales on the fishtail and the head. It's just unbelievable. So we're, uh, we're super psyched to, to put that into Arabella. And we got the bronze coat hook, which also has a lot of really cool details. And then down here, it needs to be cleaned up a bit, but we even have a bronze toilet paper holder. Yeah, the toilet paper holder is bronze. And then same thing, mahogany throughout, mahogany paneling, your own port light in the head. The light in the head matches the light in the galley, which matches the lights in the saloon, which matches the light in the forepeak. All original glass. It's Yeah, it's unreal. It's mind-boggling. I can't believe we own it. So, I mean, even this is the, the door to the head, and it's this beautiful bronze handle. And you open it up, and on the inside is a beautiful bronze latch, which still works. And has a little lock. So we'll take all this apart and clean it up and give it some lubrication and make sure it's ready to go for another hundred years. But absolutely incredible to be able to to reuse that. So these are the beautiful mahogany doors that are in the saloon. And these latches need a little love, but latch will open up. And then inside there's another little latch that's bronze. So we'll take all these apart and clean them up. And I think there's a few that are broken, but we also found a couple that were tucked in cupboards and stuff elsewhere. So we're hoping that we'll be able to make some matching sets out of them and get a bunch of functioning ones. And if we can't, then maybe we can get some of the parts for them recast or recast the parts ourselves or figure that out but be really cool to get all of them back up into working order the hinges all seem to be in great shape though can certainly use those same thing with the mahogany doors well thanks for coming on a tour of victoria and all the bronze that we've acquired we are super super psyched and we know this isn't like actually working on the boat but for us it's very much working towards the boat um so we wanted to end with one final little kind of cool thing that we found in Victoria and we've been keeping it safe here in Larry Party's classic boat construction book, which is a great read by the way. So we found this in the box that houses the uh, sextant and it is a beautiful watercolor. And I think one of the coolest things about this watercolor is one of the date in the corner of 43 that someone hand wrote and on the back they have the name of the anchorage so we thought this was this is really cool and we can i kind of safely assume that victoria was in this anchorage in the caribbean in uh 1943
So that's about all that we know really about her history. We don't know much. You know, she was made in 1926-1927 in New York. Uh, it was a southern boat between Florida and the Caribbean. Did a stint in the Pacific via the Panama Canal and made it up this way in the early 2000s. But other than that, we don't really know much. So if anybody recognizes this boat, if anybody knows anything about Victoria, we would love to hear tales. It's pretty much all we have to go on is that she was in the Caribbean in 43. So... Anyways, hope you enjoyed, and uh, we'll catch you next time.